Hi there and welcome back. Let's continue with the urinary system and in this video we will take a look at and will continue to look at the disorders of the kidney. This video will focus on the glomerulonephritis. Remember the 1 to 1.2 million tiny filters that we were talking about in both kidney. So they could have acute chronic and other version of a disease. So we'll get into that. So as the name suggests, glomerulonephritis is the inflammation of those tiny filters or the glomeruli. It's a fairly common inflammatory disease of the kidney and is characterized by the pathological changes in the glomeruli and the small arterioles of the kidney. There are about 1 million glomeruli or the filters that each kidney has. So the main distinction between what we reviewed in our last video and this video, the last video we reviewed about the pyelonephritis, inflammation of the pelvis of the kidney and or the kidney or the part of the kidney. And this one is the tiny filters, inflammation in the tiny filters. So there is no bacterial invasion in the glomerulonephritis, whereas bacterial invasion does occur in pyelonephritis. So that's the biggest difference pathologically speaking. So the glomerulonephritis is characterized as being either immunologic or non-immunologic in origin. So what do you mean by immunologic or non-immunologic? Well your immune system goes down and that leads to a fever or pneumonia or upper respiratory tract infections and things like that. That is considered as immunologic. Non-immunological glomerular, glomerular disease is less common and may be caused by metabolic, infiltrative, uh, toxic or uh, uh, hemodynamic processes. But that is less common. So this disease can have acute chronic or the focal form of or the variation that we will see soon. So let's first talk about the acute. So the acute form of this disease means it is characterized by massive protein in the urine, blood in the urine, anemia, hypertension, uh, decreased urinary output and generalized retention of tissue fluids. Okay, so you may end up having more fluids uh, decreased urinary output, it correlates, right? Uh, it may follow the inflammation in the tonsil, uh, pharyngitis, and those symptoms when it does occur, it's, it's called post-treptococcal glomerulonephritis. The fatality rate for the acute version of this disease is about 5%. And that is usually resulting from congestive heart failure, recurrent convulsions, or uremia, the too much urea or the vast in the blood. Most patients who have acute form of this disease, possibly they may recover completely, although the amount of time required for recovery varies from few days to a one year. A small percentage, this may happen that a small percentage of patients do not recover fully and they continue to suffer from or may lead to acute to chronic. So the chronic version kicks in and they may later develop the high blood pressure or the hypertension. So let's talk about the chronic version of this disease. So the chronic Glomerulonephritis is a progressive disease that may take years to run its full course and is characterized by 
irreversible damage to the renal glomeruli in the tubules. So this is something that comes to a point that it is irreversible. It cannot be reversed. Patient may initially complain some mild swelling, headache, shortness of breath and eventually the condition deteriorates. Ultimately, it may lead to the kidney failure or heart failure as terminal events. The chronic version of this disease may occur as a primary disorder or secondary to some other disease like systemic disease or maybe because the acute version keeps happening that may lead to the chronic version of this disease. It's possible that in this disease you may or may not have the loss of large amount of protein in the urine. So it depends. The, manifest the manifestations of this disease or the chronic glomerulonephritis vary with the stage of the condition. So do you have a minimal, a moderate, severe, what level, what stage of the disease that a patient may have that determines the manifestations. In the, la in the latent stage, the patient often has no symptoms and may appear in the good health and that again reflects the limitations of relying only on the blood and urine that in the industry we see the trend but um, there is always give and take uh, you want to expedite the time cycle uh, later on if there is anything uh, death claim or you never know what may happen be ready for the consequences and doesn't mean but there is always give and take so let's so sidebar let's not get into that so we will continue to move on to this disease so the only evidence of the disease is protein in the urine and or blood in the urine and occasionally you may have a high blood pressure. The nephrotic stage is characterized by generalized edema, recurrent headache, elevated blood pressure, fatigue, shortness of breath and sometimes heavy protein in the urine. So, the symptoms may subside to the latent stage with treatment, but nephrotic stage usually leads to, unfortunately, kidney failure. Nephrotic symptoms may develop one or more times during the course of this chronic disease. So, you have acute version, you have chronic version of this disease, and there is one more version to this disease that is called focal glomerulonephritis. What is focal? It means that only some of the glomeruli are impaired but the rest appears to be normal. And it, this one is characterized by a recurrent attacks of blood in the urine and mild protein in the urine. So blood in the urine, protein in the urine. Microscopic hematuria or the blood in the urine may persist between the attacks. So it may come, it may go, but the attacks, but the blood in the urine may persist in between. Now it's possible that this is a, a benign cause, but in rare cases, this may lead to uh, complications like uh, blood pressure, elevated blood pressure or hypertension or the ultimate uh, renal failure although this rarely happens but as a complications it may happen in this what we call focal glomerulonephritis something to make a note of it i got few slides for you guys so the tiny filters in the kidney that does all the processing glomeruli filters the blood and match the urine. So there are microscopic details and when infection or the inflammation occurs in these tiny filters, it could damage the whole small blood vessels. Okay?
Now, those with the medical background, they will know how this process works. I just, to simplify the process, I have just said that this is a filtering process. What kidney does, kidney filters, right? So, million plus tiny filters in each kidney. So, we have two kidneys. So, there are 2 to 2.4 million uh, tiny filters in our kidney. And when kidney does this, it doesn't throw out all the protein, all the water, all the fluid, all the nutrients. There is a process that happens here, so it will try to preserve, otherwise we will get dehydrated. So it will try to preserve what is necessary, what is needed, and the kidney will try to do the check and balance. But bottom line, when we look at the big picture, the, the blood comes in, blood goes out. Unfiltered blood comes in, filtered blood goes out, simply speaking. And 1 to 1.2 million tiny filter per kidney. Unfiltered blood comes in, filtered blood goes out. And what happens? Kidney purifies the blood. The waste gets directed downwards towards the ureters. And then it goes into the bladder, bladder stores the urine and at one point bladder fills. It gives signal to the brain and there are sphincters or the valves that opens and then through the bladder the urine goes into the urethra and through the urethra it goes out into the, out from our body. So this one refers to the normal kidney and the one where we have this uh, inflammation of glomerulonephritis. A different way to look at yet another slide. This one is the acute version of the inflammation of the glomeruli. Uh, we can see the change in the uh, look of the kidney. And of course, in this urinary system, when we talk about any disease, more or less, plus or minus, there are going to be repeated references about what we call red blood in the urine, protein in the urine, and the cast. So, this disease is not an exception. In uh, glomerulonephritis, the tiny filters, when there is inflammation in these tiny filters of the kidney, uh, one would notice blood in the urine, protein in the urine, and the RBC cast. So this is just to give an overview about this. There could be many details and the pathological uh, info out in the literature, but I'm trying to simplify this for you guys. Uh, there are other aspects to cover in the urinary system. Let's uh, meet again and I will see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.